hey everyone welcome back to my channel so a lot of you guys asked me to make a video about study bias and yes this is a high yield topic i can't count how many questions i got about this topic in my test it was all over the place all the biostat questions were about bias i did not even get a calculation question so make sure guys you master this topic all right, I'm gonna do your world questions with you and uh, hopefully everything uh, becomes easier. Okay, let's get started. Uh, so, first question says, a geneticist is interested in the potential causes of a congenital abnormality. She selects the mothers of children with and without abnormality randomly from a national birth registry. So if you choose by outcome, then you're doing a case control study. That's essentially what she was doing or he was doing. When interviewing the mothers of children with the abnormality, she discovers, so those who, uh, mothers of children who had special needs, uh, she discovers that several of them used acetaminophen during pregnancy. Mothers of children who do not have the abnormality report they do not take acetaminophen as frequently. So what do you think is the type of bias seen here? Obviously, those mothers of children who had a problem would keep on trying to remember everything that went on during pregnancy including the drugs they took and they'll be like hyper alert to what really went wrong during her pregnancy that might have caused this condition so they appear that they remember more about taking a certain drug like acetaminophen or that they are more exposed on the other hand those who had no problem their children are fine they would really not try to be hyper alert or like focus much on what went even if they took acetaminophen they just don't remember or don't focus much because they aren't affected so they appear that they're not exposed this might give an idea about a stronger relationship between acetaminophen and this abnormality than is actual uh, so because the mothers that have uh, children with ab abnormality remember more what do you think this type of bias it's called recall bias those when you have a problem or when you have a, for example you get a headache or a sinus headache for example you start remembering all the different reasons maybe uh, I went in to the AC like a room uh, like a cold room after I came back from a hot weather you're gonna keep remembering and trying to look for a possible cause while someone who didn't get a headache will not focus right even if both of you even if both of you had drastic weather changes so this is exactly uh, what recall bias is and it's typical of case control studies all right guys so this was a little bit easy. Moving on to the next question. All right, a new biomarker has been shown to allow for the early detection of non-small cell lung cancer. A study of this new test demonstrates that its use prolongs survival of lung cancer patients by three months when compared to the survival of those subjects diagnosed by conventional methods. So. This is showing you that a particular screening test, a biomarker, makes it like makes it looks like it's prolonging survival than if you didn't use the screening test. I'm sure by now you guys have already figured it out, but I'm still gonna continue. The research has concluded that the use of this new biomarker improves prognosis in patients with not small cell lung cancer. Which of the following is a potential problem with this conclusion? So it looks like because I detected your cancer earlier, it looks like you have lived for a longer time, longer survival, so screening improves prognosis. What's wrong with this conclusion? Guys, uh, this is a typical lead time bias. Uh, here is a very nice diagram showing you what I mean here. So if you haven't used this biomarker and you have, so you have two people who have small cell lung cancer, 
one of them didn't use the screening test and just presented at the time they experienced symptoms and they lived a particular period of time and then died because of the disease. And then another person who has the same type of cancer but and who would have died at the same time but instead I used I detected it earlier ahead of the other guy so using this biomarker so this is the lead time this is where I detected his condition ahead okay so I lead in this so it looks like he survived for a longer time just because I discovered it earlier but if I cross that out and look at what would have would have been the case if I didn't use this biomarker I'd see that his he actually lived the same period of time as the other one and so screening didn't change anything it just looked like he's living with the disease for a longer time just because I detected it earlier but did it really affect the prognosis no it didn't so that's the problem of lead time bias. Um, observer bias would be seen if there is no blinding and the investigator knows about someone's condition. Uh, for example, I know you have um, hypertension, so I'm expecting your blood pressure to be high. That's observer bias, and this can be avoided by blinding. Uh, measurement bias has to do with the actual tools used to measure. It has nothing to do with this. Um, confounding has to do with another variable in play, um, another exposure, but all of this doesn't apply here. This is lead time bias, guys, and there is a, uh, a very confusing other type of bias uh, that you guys can mix up, which is length time bias. The difference, okay, so what about length time bias? It shows you that screening prolongs survival as well. But the difference is that in length time bias, you got two people. You got patient A has a very severe cancer. So he came to the clinic before I get, before his time of screening. So we usually, we screen people, for example, at age 50. He came at 45 before screening time with very severe symptoms. He came to the clinic because his cancer is so severe that it became symptomatic. So it looks like he survived for only two years. On the other hand, there is someone who has a slowly growing tumor that is less severe. So I was able to pick up at the right time, uh, the screening time at age 50, for example, and I picked up the disease and it looked like he survived for longer. This is the time of death. So it looked like the person who underwent screening has survived for 10 years and the other one survived for only two years. So people might say, oh, it's screening that improved survival. When in reality, it's because patient A had a more severe type of cancer. That's why he came to me early, even before the time of screening. Okay, so with length time bias, the problem is you got two different severities. You got a one that is so severe that he came to me before I sought him, I sought screening, and there is another one who has a benign disease. So you're comparing two different things and, you, and you're saying screening prolonged survival. No, this is wrong. That's length time bias. On the other hand, with lead time bias, both of them have a slowly growing tumor, which is why it's asymptomatic and I have to screen for it. The difference is that I detected this one earlier than the other, but both of them have the same severity. Okay, so that's guys, that's the difference between lead time and length time. With length time, two different severities. With lead time, they're the same. I just detected this earlier. Got it? Okay, moving on to the next question. A large prospective study evaluates the relationship between alcohol consumption and breast cancer. So obviously, it's like a cohort study it looks for something in the future a total of 4,000 middle-aged women are enrolled in the study through a random selection daily alcohol consumption breast cancer incidents are assessed so I got um, I got two groups of people 
um, those who consume alcohol a lot and those who do not. And I'm going to monitor them and see which group gets the higher incidence of breast cancer. Five-year follow-up. So after five years, I'm going to see how many of those got breast cancer in each group. Uh, it shows that alcohol consumers are somewhat more likely to develop breast cancer, only 1.32 relative risk. And if you look at the confidence interval, guys, it indicates there is really no significant difference because in this range, there is one. If the confidence interval includes one, that means that at one point, if I repeat this investigation, I might find no difference at all. So, in other words, there's no difference, right? However, if you look at what happened, actually, the investigators also report that 800 subjects were lost to follow by the end of the study. And they were not lost equally between the two groups. The majority of them were moderate to heavy alcohol consumers. So which is the type of bias? Guys, this is what happened. So we have 400 patients or like 4,000, I'm not sure. You got 200 do not consume alcohol and you got 200 who consume it heavily. And I monitored them for five years to see how many of those in this group got breast cancer and how many of those uh, in the heavy alcohol consumption group got breast cancer, okay? However, like you should expect that those in um, who are not exposed to alcohol will have a lower incidence, right? But the results showed us that there is no difference, that both of them are, have similar incidence, which is suspicious, right? This is because what happened actually is that those in the group that were not exposed to alcohol, this is their results, like two out of, say, I guess 10, two out of 10, so that's like 20%. On the other hand, those who were heavy consumers, I lost 800 of them. I lost so many of those who are heavy consumers, even though a lot of them got breast cancer, but I just couldn't get the chance to monitor them or record their results. So when I actually came to record the results, I found out you also have two outcomes here. So it looks like there is no difference. Okay, two out of um, those, two, two of those who were exposed got breast cancer and two of those who were not exposed got breast cancer. It's the same. When in reality, you just lost so much of those who um, who were consuming alcohol, but you just couldn't record it. You lost them to follow up. Even though if you were to calculate it, you'll find that you have five here in the exposed group compared to two. But unfortunately, you couldn't even get the chance. So based on this, what type of bias is this? Um, guys, you have to understand that it's as if this is as if I chose less people from those who are heavy consumers. Instead, I chose 10 from the um, no consumers and I chose only six from the uh, consumers. So that means it's as if I selected fewer people from one group than the other. So this is called selection bias. All right, guys. Obviously, it's not lead time. Lead time is usually seen with screening of cancers. Just stick it in your head like that. Observer bias, no. Uh, this is seen with if there is no blinding. Uh, recall bias were already mentioned in case control studies. So this is selection bias uh, because it's as if I selected fewer people from the moderate group or alcohol, heavy alcohol consumption. If I lost... Um, like if those 800 people, I lost 400 from the uh, no consumers and 400 from the heavy consumers. Okay, it's fine because I lost them equally. But all of them are from the heavy consumers. No, that's the problem. That's selection bias. All right, guys, I hope that makes sense. And let me know what you think.